So this is a video on how to use the new ASHRAE calculator. Uh, before I jump into a demonstration of how to use the calculator, I'm going to just go through and talk about why we created the calculator, kind of what the, the purpose of the new calculator is, what our goals were. Uh, and then I'll show some examples of how to use the calculator. And as I go through, I'll also try to just review some of the ASHRAE standard requirements. Uh, this won't be a complete thorough training on the ASHRAE standard, but I'll try to at least review some of the reasons why we, why we have to uh, enter certain data and why it's calculated the way it's calculated. So, so with that, let me just start. So our, we kind of had four goals in mind when we created the calculator. Uh, the first one was we wanted it to be able to work offline. And so to make that happen, we have chosen uh, Google Sheets to create the calculator in. Um, Google Sheets works great for working offline as long as you don't write any extra additional scripts. And so we built this without writing any of those scripts. So if you will download this document and on whatever tablet, phone, whatever device you're using it on, if you'll click the little button to work offline, then when you get to a client's home where there is no internet, it will still work offline. You can still calculate everything. You can still record everything you need to record while you're in the client's home. And then when you get back to uh, a place where there's internet, it'll sync right back up. So I hope that that will help in some small way in a few of those instances where you need it to. Uh, the second reason we created the calculator was there's been an ask for a while to put the estimate and the final calculator side by side or basically put them on the same page. And we, we finally did it because we realized it would help to minimize the number of data entry errors that we have, uh, and uh, particularly between the two calculations. An example of something we saw very frequently was uh, the auditor would fill out the estimate and they would say that there were three bedrooms and then the QCI would come along, they would fill out their uh, the final calculation and they would indicate that there were four bedrooms. And this really could just be a difference of opinion about how the rooms were being used in a home, but um, we don't ever want to have a file where you know one of them says there were three bedrooms and the other one says there was four. We've got to get on the same page about what, how many bedrooms there are and how they're being used. So uh, by laying them side by side, it allows us to look and make sure that we're not you know, keying in any of the wrong data. But also, when I laid them side by side, I tried to eliminate as many of those opportunities for error as I could. So instead of having the uh, QCI key in the number of bedrooms, what we've done is we've just added a checkbox where the auditor will put this information down when they run their estimate and then the QCI will be responsible to just verify that that information is accurate. If it is not accurate, the QCI is responsible to change it and make it accurate and to communicate with the auditor so that they understand one another and that they know, you know, whoever needs to learn can learn from it and make sure that the information is accurate going forward. So that's kind of how the first two steps are set up where the QCI will really just be validating or verifying stuff, but it gives the QCI a checkbox to do that. I'll show you an example of that as I go through this. Uh, so those were the first two goals, work offline and also kind of minimize these, these data entry errors. We've got some other just conditional logic going on that certain cells will turn red or um, or you know, give you some sort of a warning if there uh, if there are any of those data entry errors. Uh, the third thing we wanted to do is we wanted a way to better uh, document what was going on in the house before you started weatherizing the house and what your strategy was to actually meet ASHRAE. So on the estimate side of things, I've added this column here where it says pre-weatherization existing fan CFM. And that way you can document what the fans were doing before you started working on the house. And then when you fill out this section here in the middle, you'll be able to document what the fans, what you plan on having the fans do uh, as part of your ASHRAE strategy. 
and then the whole thing will calculate and tell you whether or not that your strategy meets ASHRAE. And uh, so anyway, so I've added that column there and I've added this stuff that's purple. Uh, if you don't meet ASHRAE with just your local exhaust fans, then you'll actually use this other section of purple down below to say, we're gonna add an HRV or we're gonna use some makeup air or something like that to uh, meet ASHRAE. And the calculator will, will uh, take all of that into account and it'll tell you whether or not your strategy meets ASHRAE. So just a better way to document what you're doing, what you're estimating ASHRAE will be. And then the fourth thing is to have a better way to document the conditions that you left the house in after you were done weatherizing it and exactly what you set each fan at and and have the calculator also tell you whether or not you left the house in a condition that was meeting ASHRAE. So the final calculation side also has these purple boxes where you can enter that information in and it will give you that. So. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll just run through an example and I'll kind of talk about how everything works. All right, so let's start filling out the form. Uh, two rules in general, and I, I hope they're pretty intuitive. Rule number one, you need to fill in all the yellow boxes. Rule number two, if any red pops up, you need to address it. When you're done with the calculation, there should not be any red warnings anywhere on the calculator. So watch for those. Also, um, I, have, I have protected the portions of this sheet that have formulas in it. So there shouldn't be any formulas that you could accidentally mess up, but uh, what that looks like is if you tried to you know, enter something in into a field where you shouldn't be entering it, you'll just get this warning heads up, you know, you don't want to change that so you'll just hit cancel and then it won't let you change that you can change that if you hit OK there's no way for me to prevent you from doing that but at least you'll get a warning so just like the old calculator you're gonna put in the clients name the energy auditors name and then the date that this estimate was was done so let me go ahead and do that really quickly And I'm going to leave the estimate date blank just to show you what it does later on on the calculator. But you need to fill in all of that. So that's the first part. Uh, there's a field there for job number. If your agency uses a job number, you can enter that. But uh, it's not a required field. Okay, so um, the ASHRAE calculation is kind of broken up into three major steps or three things and so I've represented those here so just so you can visually see that you know you're putting this information in to calculate step number one which is whole building ventilation step number two all of that information is being used to calculate your infiltration credit and number three is all about local exhaust and whether or not you have a deficit so so to fill out step number one I have added one question here and that is um, just dwelling type. If you hit the drop down, it says detached single family or attached to other dwellings. If you select that this is attached to other dwellings, you're going to get a red warning that, re that tells you or reminds you you can't use this calculator if it's attached dwellings. Uh, this calculator is not designed to do that. You'll have to use the red calculator um, or you can reach out to me for some help with that. But this calculator is only for detached single family, so you should be selecting that for that type of housing. And then the other three questions are the same as they, they were on the old calculator. So number of bedrooms, number of occupants, and the finished square footage. So let's go ahead and enter that in really quickly. So let's say there's three bedrooms, and let's say there is one occupant, and that we have 1,950 square feet of finished space. So I have included all the math just like I did on the last one so that you can see how the calculator is working. But let's just take a minute and talk about the ASHRAE standard and why the math is doing what it's doing. So the ASHRAE standard, before they integrated it into the weatherization program, the ASHRAE standard was just designed for new buildings. And so when you would take your plans into the city and say, hey, I'm going to build a new house, 
the city would say, well, how does it meet ASHRAE? And they would look at the number of bedrooms there were, and they would, they would try to use that information to estimate how many people there were going to be in the house. Because the ASHRAE standard is, it requires that for every person in the house, you have 7.5 CFM of ventilation. And since it's a new house, nobody lives in it yet, they had no way of determining how many people were going to be in the home. They just had to establish a standard, and that standard was based off of the number of bedrooms. And what they did was they took the number of bedrooms uh, plus one extra, and the one extra was they really said there's going to be two people in the master bedroom in most homes, and then there will be at least one person in every other bedroom. So they, they counted two people for the first bedroom and then one for every subsequent bedroom, and as you can see, we put in three bedrooms, it's saying two people in the master plus one in each of the other two bedrooms equals four, and it's multiplying four times 7.5, and it says we need 30 CFM of whole building ventilation for that many people in that house. Now, the ASHRAE standard, they tweaked it a little bit to help it fit the retrofit environment to, so it would work in the weatherization program, and they said, well, if the house already exists and you know which how many occupants are going to be in the house then we want you to we want you to document how many bedrooms there are we also want you to document how many occupants there are and then we want your calculator to take whichever's greater so in this case since we know there's only one occupant in the house instead of multiplying 1 times 7.5 it says, the standard says we actually have to take whichever's greater. In this case, it's three bedrooms is greater than one occupant. And so it's just doing the math and, and doing that. Now, if I put this in at three occupants, then it's going to take whichever is greater, and it's still going to be four because it's saying the number of bedrooms plus one, right? So, but if I bump this up to five occupants, now the number of occupants becomes greater than what you would have added for the bedrooms and so now it's saying five people times 7.5 equals 37.5 and so that's how much ventilation is required there. Uh, I'm going to leave it at, at five occupants for our calculation and then the finished square footage the ASHRAE calculation says for every square foot of finished space you need 0.3 CFM of ventilation so all it does is take 1950, whatever you put in that box, and multiply it by 0.3. So in this case, we need 37.5 CFM of ventilation for the humans that are in the house, 59 CFM of ventilation based off of this finished square footage, and add those two numbers together, we need an estimated whole building ventilation of 96 CFM. And that's how step number one works. Okay, for step number two, we're going to calculate the infiltration credit. And what that is, is the ASHRAE standard says if you are measuring how leaky the house is, then you could get an infiltration credit. And if you have a really, really leaky house and it has a lot of natural infiltration, you might not need any mechanical ventilation. Uh, and so to calculate that, we need to know what the nearest weather station is. Uh, that way we can we can use that information based on the nearest weather station uh, to um, calculate you know the weather and the wind shielding factor for that geographic area. You want the dwelling height uh, so that it can account for any stack effect. If you have a really tall building the stack effect would be greater and so the infiltration credit is affected by that. And then that requirement that they had was if you are measuring how leaky the house is and we are measuring it because we run a blower door so we're gonna put in our pre blower door and then we're gonna since this is our estimate we're also going to put in our estimated reduction the old calculator was just set by default to go to 30% if if the house was below if your pre blower door was below 4000 CFM of leakage then it would go to 30% if it went up above 4000 then it would go to 50 because those are our program requirements but 
We know that you're not always going to get those reductions on every home, and in some cases you're going to get a higher reduction. So this estimated reduction defaults to 30% every time. So it's up to you if, if your pre-blower door is, is higher than 4,000, you need to manually change this to 50%. Uh, or if you're in a situation where you feel like you are not going to get much of a reduction at all, you can change this down to 10%. Or if you're going, if you know you're going to knock it out of the park, you could change it to 60%. I'm going to leave it at 30 for our calculation. Let's go ahead and select a weather station. Let's say that our nearest weather station is Moab. That the height of our dwelling is 19 feet. And if you have questions about what that is, there's a little note there you can read. And then our pre-blower door. Let's say our pre-blower door on this house was uh, 2745. So since we have our estimated reduction at 30%, it is, it's it's going to multiply 70% of 2, 2,745. So it's estimating that when we're done weatherizing the house, that our post blower door will be around 1922. So it's taking the nearest weather station give, using a weather station factor of 0.54, that's just a table that the ASHRAE standard, they put that out, so they we multiply it by a factor. Mm -hmm. There's an S factor for the number of stories or how tall the building is of uh, 1.40, and then we have that estimated blower door, and all of those uh, multiplied together give us a negative 75. Why is it negative? Well you're going to subtract it from your whole building ventilation needed. So we need 96 CFM, but we get a credit of 75. So down below, the calculator is going to take 96 plus a negative 75, or 96 minus 75. And we'll really have, what is that, 21? So, so far we only need 21 CFM of ventilation, if that's how we're going to you know, if that's what our post blower door will be. So that's step number two. All right, step number three is where we document what's going on with our local exhaust fans, and then we calculate and see if we have a deficit, see if we, if we don't quite have enough local exhaust. So first off, what is local exhaust? Local exhaust is, um, ASHRAE requires that you have local exhaust fans in every kitchen in the home and every bathroom in the home that has a bathtub or a shower in it. And the reason for that is they want the homeowner or the occupant to be able to move the bulk moisture out of the home as quickly as possible. And so those are the rooms in most homes where you're going to have bulk moisture. In a kitchen, you're going to get bulk moisture from a pot on the stove boiling. So their standard is in a kitchen, you need to have a fan directly above the stove that moves at least 100 CFM of air. And that stove, that fan is just a on-demand fan. On-demand means that there's a switch on the wall or there's a switch on the fan that the homeowner or the occupant can turn on when they want it and they can turn it off. That's what we mean by on demand. In a bathroom, you're required to have 50 CFM of, of air and the bulk moisture there is the tub or the shower. When you guys get in the shower, you're gonna steam up the mirror and if you have a good fan that moves air out, it'll keep the mirror from getting steamed up. So if, the, if you have a house with a half bath where there's just a sink and a toilet, you don't have to have any local exhaust fans in there. You're not required by ASHRAE to have any. So, so our the section, step number three on our calculator, this is where we're gonna document just those rooms that require this local exhaust. And so it has one spot for a kitchen and it has a spot for up to four bathrooms. Most of the homes we deal with don't have more than one kitchen. If you run into a situation where you do, you'll have to use a different calculator, or you'll have to use this one in a slightly different way, and I can help you with that. Uh, but basically, in most instances, you're gonna have one kitchen and one to four bathrooms, so I've just set it up that way. 
and if you select it kind of defaults to having at least one bathroom because every house is required to have one uh, but let's say if, if you had a house where there were three then it will just unmask or make visible the uh, the lines for the bathroom number two and bathroom number three and then you can see that oh now I have some more yellow boxes I need to fill those out uh, for this example let's just say that there are, are two bathrooms uh, just to minimize how many things I have to key in and uh, let's just start filling some stuff in now as I mentioned earlier I have added a column so that you can document what the pre weatherization conditions were so the first thing you do on every home is you'd go in into the kitchen and you'd say is there an, a local exhaust fan in here meaning is there a fan directly above the stove now one little caveat on the kitchen I have made a note about it here is that the fans required to be directly above the stove or you could actually have a larger fan somewhere else in the kitchen up on the ceiling of the kitchen or over on a wall but if you have that larger fan since it's not directly above the stove it has to be even bigger so that it will move the moisture from the stove you know across the kitchen and out that fan so you could have a, a house where there's not a fan above the kitchen or above the stove but there's one over on the wall but that one has to move 300 CFM of air so if you get into a situation where you have another fan somewhere in the kitchen if it's not moving 300 CFM of air you can pretty much ignore it just don't even worry about it you're gonna look at the kitchen as though there's no fan there because uh, we're not going to be swapping it out and putting in a 300 CFM fan. Um, anyway, if you need any help on that one, reach out to me. I, I don't think you'll run into it very often, but be aware of it. The other caveat is in the bathrooms, you are required to have 50 CFM of on-demand ventilation or if the ventilation in the bathroom is going to be continuous, it's going to be on all the time, then you're only required to have 20 CFM of ventilation. And again, the whole idea here is just to move bulk moisture out of these rooms. And so they've set a standard where it's like, okay, if the fan's directly above the stove, 100 CFM will work great. If it's not, then we need more. In a bathroom, 50 CFM, whenever we flip the switch on, should be plenty. Uh, or if the fan's on all the time, then we don't quite need 50. We could go down to something closer to 20. And since it'll be on even after they finish their shower and leave the room it'll still move the bulk moisture out in a timely manner uh, so be aware of that the calculator does account for the the 20 CFM continuous in the bathrooms so you don't have to worry about that it'll it'll tell you it'll take care of the deficit for that but the kitchen caveat is that's the one thing going on here where I have a note the calculator will not account for that but Back to what I was talking about here with this new column we're gonna go ahead and record what's going on in the house so let's say we went into this house and there's no uh, well let's say there's a fan in this kitchen but it's not vented to the outside or it's not working so I'm gonna say that pre weatherization there is a fan but it's moving zero CFM of air to the outside bathroom number one I'm gonna go in we're gonna measure the flow on it and let's say there is a fan but it's only moving like 13 CFM and bathroom number two we're gonna say there's not a fan at all so we'll just say there's zero and then you're gonna the next part is where you actually start thinking about okay am I gonna do anything to these local exhaust fans to as part of my uh, ASHRAE strategy and so you're gonna document that here in the kitchen if you were not going you're not going to change anything in the kitchen then you just put well I estimate that my post weatherization will also be zero and you're going to document your ventilation type now this is one thing that has changed from the old calculator there are now on the old calculator it gave you the option of intermittent or continuous the problem with that was it really wasn't an accurate depiction of what was going on because intermittent in our when it comes to ASHRAE means that the fans going to be running for a certain period of time every hour and basically we didn't have a way to say that this fan is going to be it's just going to be a local exhaust fan and it's just going to be turned on on demand 
or we also didn't have a way to say there really is no fan here. So in this case, we, we're going to say that there is a fan in the kitchen, but it's, it's not venting anything outside. So we're, uh, we're going to leave it at zero, and you could call it a local exhaust fan. So maybe it is vented outside, but it's just not working, and we're not going to fix it. And that's, that's how you'd record that. Uh, in bathroom number two, where we decided there, there is no fan, let's say we're not going to add one there and we're going to record that there's none. So now, now we have a much better idea of what, we know exactly what was there beforehand and we know what is going to be there after weatherization. Uh, and then in bathroom number one, let's say bathroom number one, we're going to fix that fan and we're probably going to use that one as our ashtray fan. So how big of an ashtray fan are we going to put in? Well, um, if you put in at least a 50 CFM of ashtray fan, then we know that it will get rid of our local exhaust deficit. If this fan was going to be bigger than that, say 60 or 70 or 80, um, it's really not going to affect our local exhaust deficit, but uh, since I've now added these purple boxes, it will factor in that amount of ventilation and it will include that in your whole building strategy. So I'm going to leave it at 50 right now and you'll notice nothing's happening over in our CFM deficit and it's because we still have some yellow boxes we have to fill out. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and keep working here. But uh, So bathroom number one, we're going to say that's our, our fan that's going to have 50 and let's say we, so it's not going to be our local exhaust fan. We're going to use it as part of our ashtray strategy or our whole building strategy, sorry. So we have the choice of either intermittent or continuous. We also have the choice of none. So if I put none in there, notice it turns red. And it's because you can't have a fan that moves 50 that is none. It, you know, so it's just, there's a few things in there. It's going to give you a warning wherever I could build some logic in. But let's say that that's going to be an intermittent fan, meaning it's going to be running for part of every hour. And then there's the column. Th this column is not new. It's been there on the old calculator. And that's where you document whether or not there's an operable window. Why do we document whether or not there's an operable window? Well, the ASHRAE standard says that if there is an operable window, then they'll give you a credit towards your local exhaust of 20. So let me show you how this works. If, if our kitchen has zero ventilation and it's going to have zero ventilation when we're done and it has no operable window, you will have a deficit of 100. And you'll have a deficit of 100 because you're supposed to have 100 CFM of ventilation in the kitchen. Now if it has all of this but it had an operable window, it will give you a credit of 20 CFM for that window because the, the occupant could go and open the window and get some of that bulk moisture out when they want to. So let's say there is an operable window in the kitchen. The same thing applies in bathrooms. You get a 20 CFM credit if there is an operable window in a bathroom. So let's say in bathroom number one there's n there is an operable window. Now we got a 20 CFM credit, but we already had 50 CFM of ventilation, so that means we are definitely not going to have a deficit there. We have we have more than 50 CFM of ventilation between this fan and this window, so there's zero deficit there. And then let's say in bathroom number two, we have no fan and we have no operable window. So sure enough, we are we're required to have 50, so it's going to say we have a deficit of 50. Now, the way that the ASHRAE standard works is that it says, all right, if you have a deficit, um, one thing you could do to fix that is you could just turn up your whole building ventilation. And, and they said, well, you know, well, how much do we have to turn it up? And, you know, you can kind of imagine a, a discussion went, took place and, and some, somebody said, well, we don't want to turn it up by up to 130 CFM, which is the deficit, because we don't have bulk moisture all the time. And so they settled on 25% of that, because you don't have bulk moisture all the time. And by turning up your whole building ventilation a little bit, 
that should provide enough ventilation, enough extra ventilation that when there is bulk moisture, since that whole building ventilation is still happening and it'll happen while they're showering and it'll happen after they're done showering, that eventually that extra ventilation will, will get that bulk moisture out of the house in a timely manner. So you figure out your deficit, which is we have a 130, which is our total, and then the estimated deficit ventilation needed, or the amount of extra CFM we need, is only 25% of that, which in this case is 33. So now, the ASHRAE calculator is going to add up the amount of whole building ventilation we need, plus our infiltration credit, which is a negative 75, plus 33, which is the amount that we need for our deficit, and down here at the bottom you will see that it's giving us an estimated ventilation required. Those three numbers added up equal 54. So we need 54 CFM of air and that's continuous. So if we if we do have a strategy where we're gonna have some intermittent ventilation then we'll figure out what the equivalent is in continuous because we need continuous ventilation. So that's the local exhaust deficit or how you calculate your local exhaust deficit. All right, now that we have all step one through three figured out, now we've got to start thinking about what our whole building ventilation strategy is. And we've really already started thinking about it with our local exhaust stuff. But, um, but what I've done is I've added these purple boxes to the calculator so that it will, up here on the local exhaust section, it, it looks at each of the local exhaust fans and it says, are any of these going to be part of your whole building ventilation strategy? And since we've indicated that the fan in bathroom number one is, it's not gonna be just a plain old local exhaust fan and it's not none, it's either gonna be intermittent or continuous, that's how it knows that that's gonna be part of your whole building ventilation strategy. And that's why you're getting these purple numbers showing up over here because it's saying, okay, uh, a uh, fan that's going to move 50 CFM of air intermittently, um, it needs to run in order to meet the exhaust or the, the ventilation requirement down here, it needs to run at least this long. And what it's doing is since, since 50 CFM is more than, or sorry, less than the amount of ventilation we need, then it's actually just saying, well, even though you've selected intermittent, you need to run at 60 minutes out of every hour. Uh, now let's move this number up and make it bigger than 54 and see what happens. So let's say that the fans can move 70 CFM of air. Well since I told it was intermittent what it's saying is well if you'll turn that on for a runtime of 47 minutes out of every hour that will be the equivalent of 55 CFM continuous and that will meet the ASHRAE standard. You only need 54 CFM continuous running this fan, 47 minutes out of every air, hour will give you 55, and that will meet ASHRAE. And you'll notice that uh, down here on the whole building ventilation strategy, there's no yellow boxes. There's nowhere to put any information in. If I change it back to 50, we weren't meeting ASHRAE, and so now we have some yellow boxes down here. And, and the whole idea there is like, well, if this section up here doesn't meet ASHRAE, then you're gonna have to add some other type of ventilation and you need to go ahead and document that here. Now before you start filling that out thinking you've got to document that, again you want to go back here and think about could I meet ASHRAE with my local exhaust? Um, now I've tried to add in some logic here and, and kind of help you as you develop your whole building strategy. So before you get too far into this, scroll down to the bottom and see if there's any red. So first off, this says addition, additional needed to meet ASHRAE 4. We need 4 more CFM. We have 50, we need 54, and it's just saying you need to make some corrections. Uh, also, I've scrolled down, and remember this is just a spreadsheet, so I, I actually I have a warning in each one of these boxes, so you you kind of have to scroll down. There's only four or five of them, so just make sure you, you're looking down here at everything. Uh, but there's this other red warning that says, you must complete all required fields above. 
So even if we've even if we've dialed in exactly what our ASHRAE strategy is, I'm going to change this back to 70 uh, so that we know we're meeting ASHRAE. We still have this warning and this is still red saying, hey, you haven't filled out all of the required fields. Now this is just the estimate side of things. So all this is saying is, is the, the auditor hasn't filled everything out. You don't have to go fill out all these, these things over here. You save those for the QCI. But the required field that has not been filled out, it's yellow, so it's got to be that estimate date. I'm going to put today's date in there. And once I put that in there, I'll scroll back down to the bottom and you'll see that our, our uh, whole building ventilation strategy is that we'll make this one bath fan an intermittent fan and that will give us enough ventilation to meet ASHRAE. So it's green and it says it meets ASHRAE. Uh, now, before we move on to the QCI side of things, let's just run a couple of different scenarios here. Um, one of them, like, let me dial this back. Let's say that we're going to uh, only have 50 CFM of intermittent. Um, and this says we have an additional needed of four. So all it's indicating is we've got to add something. So we could just go, well, you know, uh, We'll just add another fan. Now, to get four CFM of air, that, that may not be the best option here. And you may not want to add it down here. You may not want to add a whole building ventilation strategy if you've got a bathroom that doesn't have any ventilation. Maybe it would be better to add some ventilation in that bathroom. And uh, what if we added the ventilation in the bathroom, but we just called it a local exhaust fan? That would actually decrease our... Uh, local our CFM deficit by enough that this would then meet ASHRAE and we really wouldn't have to turn any more ventilation on we'd just be adding this fan that would be off and you know switched on when the client needs it so let's do that let's say bath number two we're gonna add a 50 CFM fan there again this turns red because you can't have none if there's 50 CFM um, and let's say that this one's going to be a continuous fan. So since it's continuous, it's, it's calculating the minimum runtime of 60 minutes out of every hour, and it's going to give us 50 CFM of ventilation. Now, I don't know if you saw it, but the estimated deficit changed. That We used to have a total deficit of 130, and uh, it was requiring 33 CFM of ventilation. We now have a... Uh, deficit total of, of 80 and 20 percent of that is only 20 so now we really only need um, 41 CFM of continuous ventilation which means that we could actually go up here and you know think about our strategy again so we've got it set up to where um, we're gonna put 50 CFM in with an intermittent fan and 50 in with a continuous fan but look down here, it's saying, warning, this strategy is going to overventilate the house. So we know we could turn one of those down a little bit. And since our intermittent one, we could turn that one way down. Uh, but what if we just made it so it was a local exhaust fan? So now it's, it's no longer going to add the ventilation, right? But we don't need it because bath number two is going to give us more than 41 of our estimated ventilation. So what we could really do on this house is we could just go fix bathroom number one since it wasn't ventilating very much. We could put in a new local exhaust fan, but it's not going to be running all the time. And in bathroom number two, we could make that our ASHRAE fan and have that run all the time. Or if we wanted to make this even better, we could change bathroom number two from, from continuous where it's going to be ventilating 50 CFM all the time. If we had a switch in there that would allow it to run intermittently, then it would only need to run 50 minutes out of every hour and it would give us very precise ventilation and we wouldn't be over ventilating the house. So you basically you can do a lot with your local exhaust um, strategy. That's what we typically see in the program is that we meet our whole building ventilation strategy usually with our local exhaust. Um, there's going to be a few instances where you could actually you could get rid of your deficit completely 
and that would make it so that you don't need to have any ventilation at all. Uh, let me tweak some numbers here. Let's say that we have no local exhaust deficit at all. So um, in this case, we still would need more than 15 CFM of air. What happens when you get to 15? If you only need 15, then you actually don't have to provide any mechanical ventilation. Uh, the ASHRAE standard says anytime you need more than 15 CFM of air, then you have to provide that mechanical ventilation. But if it's less than that, you don't have to worry about it. And the reason for that is basically I, I, I can imagine somebody raised their hand and said, are, are you serious? I calculated ASHRAE and it tells me I need 5 CFM of air. So you really want me to install a, a whole building ventilation system that's going to move 5 CFM of air. And so I think the folks at ASHRAE said, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And they set that standard at 15. So let's change something here. Let's say that, let's say we're going to, um, we're only going to, well, let's say our pre-blower door was higher than that. Let's say it was uh, 3,200. So our post-blower door is going to be a little smaller. And now uh, we, have, we have more of an infiltration credit. So 96 minus 88, you know, plus 0 equals 8 CFM of required ventilation. And since that's less than 15, you get this little note that says your estimated continue ven continuous ventilation is less than 15. And mechanical ventilation may not be required. And so it's saying this meets ASHRAE and this is working just fine. Um, but let me go back up and change. I'm going to change our kitchen back to zero. So now we have a deficit. But uh, it, we, we're getting some red markers here that says, hey, you don't quite meet ASHRAE. But wait a second. We only It says our estimated ventilation required is 28. And our plan says, you know, we have this intermittent fan and it's giving us the equivalent of 29. So why aren't we meeting ASHRAE or why is this red? It's just saying make some corrections. And the warning down here says you're in a zone here on this house where you could consider reducing the local exhaust deficit to avoid installing continuous ventilation. And so anytime you get this warning, you need to seriously consider doing this. Now it's not going to work on every home, but if it is possible, that is the best ASHRAE strategy for that client. And the reason why is that, is, is this, is that if we went back in here on this house and we said, you know what, instead of turning this fan on and running it all the time and basically exhausting that conditioned air out of their house, wouldn't it be better to put a fan in the kitchen and turn it off? And now we have a new fan in the kitchen, a new fan in each bathroom, but they're all off. So they're not wasting energy, but whenever they do have the bulk moisture, they can move it out so that this house actually meets the standard. But it's not costing them a lot of money to have a fan running all the time. And so in this case, as we already know, if we get rid of the kitchen um, deficit by adding a fan above the stove that moves 100 CFM of air, then we now have a deficit of zero. And if, and again, we have to remember all of this is an estimate. This is if, if when we're done, we our estimated post blower door is close to the 2240, then this house will meet ASHRAE. Now, if you looked at this and you thought, you know what, this is just not a good candidate. I can't, I really can't feasibly add a fan to the kitchen or maybe you can't add it to the bathroom so even though you know the numbers work out on in this house I'm not going to be able to do anything to eliminate the local exhaust deficit then even though there's a red warning down here that you'll get this little box that pops up and it says ignore this this is not a good option for this house and so the red will go away and it'll say this meets ASHRAE so uh, there's a couple other warnings here that'll pop up depending on the situation. Um, I'm just I'm just clicking on the boxes and I'm just reading them up here. This one says 
if you know under certain conditions you'll get an error that a local exhaust fan is listed as continuous but continuous ventilation is not required so for example if we if we ran if we change that to continuous first off this is saying your strategy is going to overventilate the home you may want to adjust it or you could ignore it so we can ignore that one um, but again if we had gotten rid of the local exhaust deficit then we would have a situation where uh, error local exhaust is listed as continuous but continuous may not be required and so it's it's actually showing you hey this probably shouldn't be continuous because you don't need it so you can go ahead and change that to local exhaust and all the red goes away and shows you that you're meeting ASHRAE so really the goal I, the red stuff is not to be annoying it's just to help those who are newer or even those of us who are have done this a lot but you know we don't always remember to think about every aspect of ASHRAE there's a few little warnings that'll pop up and help guide you to get the right ASHRAE strategy uh, now one last thing I want to show you before we move on to the the final calculation side of things let's just let's tweak this back to where we're not meeting ASHRAE and let's say that we have no fan there so we've got a deficit and we're not going to be able to install an ASHRAE fan here for some reason so we need to maybe this house has some vermiculite in it and we know that whenever there's vermiculite if we don't if we don't have lab results telling us that there is no asbestos in it then we actually have to put the house under positive or neutral pressure in order to meet ASHRAE so let's pretend that's what's going on in this house and uh, you know maybe it would have been a good option to el like eliminate the exhaust deficit but unfortunately on this house we would have to disturb some of that vermiculite in order to in to fix these fans so we've ignored it because it's not a good option and so now we're going to look at whole building ventilation uh, strategy down here where we would add some other type of fan now there's a drop down for the location of these and you'll notice that the kitchen and the bathrooms are not listed in the drop down now that's not to say you couldn't add a new whole building fan in one of those rooms you're welcome to um, it just won't if you do that it won't factor into your uh, your local exhaust deficit uh, because in most situations you would have just adjusted this fan but if you needed to add something in one of those rooms you can type in whatever location you want or if there's like a weird room that's not listed here say they have a, a billiards room or something and you just want to say that that's the location you can type that in or just select from the uh, drop down there's a few different things here uh, let's say we're gonna add one in the in the hallway on the main floor so that's our location and then the fan type the fan types here you could have an exhaust fan in some situations even though it wouldn't count towards your local exhaust you'd just be adding another exhaust fan in some other part of the house in order to help you meet ASHRAE or you could do an HRV or an ERV I just left this as HRV I haven't seen anybody installing legitimate ERVs but if you if you added an ERV just you can just call it an HRV or if you're gonna do makeup air on the system then you can uh, select that let's just say we're gonna put in an HRV because we want to put this house under positive pressure and our estimated fan CFM so part of the reason why this is calculating this is it you know it's telling us we need 41 CFM so how big of a fan are we gonna put in well let's make sure that our uh, our HRV will give us at least 41 so we're gonna want to put something in there that, that's like 60 or 50 or something that's bigger than 41 now how come it's not telling me that I meet the standard yet it's because I still have a yellow box you have to fill in all the yellow boxes before it'll calculate it's just set up that way to help you remember to fill out the form completely so I'm gonna select the ventilation type and is this HRV going to be intermittent or continuous if you select intermittent then it will calculate how many minutes out of every hour that it will need to run in order to give you the equivalent continuous ventilation to meet ASHRAE so this is saying 
If that thing would move 60, it would only have to run for 41 minutes out of every hour, and that would meet ASHRAE. If I selected continuous, then it just knows you're going to run at 60, and you'll get 60 CFM. But either way, it meets ASHRAE. So now if this strategy still did not meet ASHRAE, then the second row would light up with some yellow squares, and you would need to consider either tweaking some of these other things so that the yellow squares would disappear or using that second row to add yet another fan to make sure that this house meets ASHRAE. I don't think there'll be too many situations where you actually use that second row but it is there and it will it will become active when it's appropriate. Okay so that's the estimate side of things and uh, auditors I strongly encourage you to use this and as you're using it you're probably going to run into some scenarios where the calculator might have some errors something's not quite gonna work right I don't know if you noticed a few minutes ago but when uh, when we got rid of this issue uh, this stuff was still visible so there was a little bit of an error there anyway if you run into errors let me know let me know what's going on let me know how you're getting that error because my goal is to fix this draft version and make it work really, really well, you know, with all the situations that you face. So if you do run into errors, I have put this little link over here that says send state feedback on the calculator. If you click on it, it'll just let you fill out a quick little Google form. It'll let you attach a screenshot or just write an explanation of what's going on, and it'll send me an email and tell me what that there was an error. You can also share the calculator, your, your whatever calculator it is you're working on with me, and um, I could uh, you know, take a look at the error on that calculator since it's a Google form. But uh, that's the whole idea there. All right, once the estimate is done, then this will go into the audit file and it will be there when the QCI is ready to go and do their final calculation. Now this is the part I'm looking for some feedback from you guys on. Since we've worked so hard to, to have a standard file format, we need to figure out where we're going to put this. I don't know if it's going to be more appropriate to have it in the audit file or in the, uh, the closeout section of the file. Uh, I'll be asking for a little bit of feedback on that, but uh, hopefully this won't mess up your systems too much. Or, you know your processes but if it does give me some feedback and you know we're, we're open to some suggestions on that but but the in theory the thought is that the auditor will finish the estimate side of things and then uh, they'll share this with the QCI or they'll make it available to the QCI so that when they uh, go to QCI this job they'll be able to fill out their portion so let's go ahead and fill out the QCI side of things again if the, the goal is just to fill out all the yellow boxes if you skip any of the yellow boxes, it'll give you a warning down at the bottom that you haven't filled everything out. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's put in uh, whoever, let's say, uh, we have a QCI named Joe, and the QCI date would have obviously been after the 2nd of February so we'll say it was April 18th and then step number one we've talked about the purpose of that in you know earlier in this video so the QCI's job is really just to come in here and verify all this again if there are any discrepancies the QCI needs to correct them so it's okay if the QCI went over here and said, oh, you know what, there were actually four bedrooms, not three. But then the QCI needs to go and talk to the auditor and find out why the auditor was considering only three. They need to have some communication so that we can learn from any time there are errors. Or if the square footage was wrong and the QCI found that, no, the, the auditor calculated this wrong. It was really like 2,800 or something. But whatever it is, the QCI's job is to make sure that this data is now correct and once it is correct they will check this box as soon as they check this box then all it does is it carries this number over to here and and now that 
officially becomes the whole building ventilation needed. And again, we don't have any duplication of data, so there's no chance of, of keying in this stuff wrong. Step number two, the infiltration credit. The QCI is going to just verify all of this data. Uh, they're verifying that they picked the right weather station, the dwelling height is accurate, that the pre-blower door matches the actual pre-blower door in the file, and that the estimated reduction met the standard or was a reasonable reduction for whatever the goal was. Once they've done that, they're going to check this box. Now you'll notice nothing happened yet, but it's because we have a yellow box still. So the QCI is going to put in their final blower door. And let's say on this one, we, uh, we did a little bit better and we got a, a 1965. So it will calculate then, you know, it'll do all these same calculations um, and it will figure out what the total infiltration credit is. In this case, it's only 77 because we got the house tighter than we thought it would be. If since over here the house was looser and so you would get a little bit more natural infiltration, the tighter the house gets, the smaller that credit gets. And then on step number three, your local exhaust. So first off, the QCI is going to do exactly what they did before. They're going to go over here and verify that the local exhaust inputs on the estimate are accurate. And again, the one of the main jobs of the QCI is to just double check and make sure that the estimate was done properly. So you're going to verify, yep, this, you know, at this point, at the QCI, you may not be able to verify what the pre-existing fan is, but you can look at that and say, okay, did we estimate this right? Um, did we get the operable window information accurate? Uh, and then, you know, does all of this represent what we were trying to do? Now, uh, it's not important for you if you, after the auditor established these two columns, if you guys changed your plan you don't need to go in and change all of this information uh, but you definitely want to double check to make sure that if there were operable windows that this actually represents what's going on in the house so once you've done that once you've verified all of your local exhausts inputs are correct you're going to check this box and then now you have to fill out all of the information for the final QCI so in that case um, you're going to go into the kitchen and if you have installed any type of a kitchen fan then you would actually measure the the actual flow of that fan so in this case we have a kitchen where we didn't do anything to it there is no new fan the existing one was at zero and so you're you know you would measure it and say yep it really is not moving any air and you'd put in that the actual measured CFM was zero the ventilation type was a local exhaust fan. There is one there. If there was nothing there, you'd put none. And the operable window is a yes. So again, you're gonna get the exact same CFM deficit. Nothing changes there. Um, and then you'll go on to the next row there for the bath fans. So in the bath, your plan was to put in a, C a 50 CFM local exhaust fan. You've installed this fan and let's now you have to measure it and you measure it you guys did a great job ventilating the fan and you actually got 56 CFM of air and it too was a local exhaust fan and uh, there is an operable window if you accidentally put that there is not an operable window things will turn red and it's basically saying this does not match this so now you need to go back and say hey wait a second did I did I not check this right or did I key this one in wrong but once these two numbers match, then the red goes away, and that way we know everything is uh, lining up the way it's supposed to. Bath number two, you're going to go in there, and again, on this one, we did a none. So if you didn't add anything and there is no fan, you would just simply put in that there's none, and there's no fan, and there's still no operable window. And so we end up getting a local exhaust deficit. In this case, the deficit matches, but you could have a situation where, uh, you know, this number does not necessarily have to match that number, but we're actually, you're putting in the actual, what you actually measured and what you actually set the fans at, and you're getting your local exhaust deficit. 
Uh, now, if we were going to have, if we decided, you know what, we're actually going to use one of these fans as our, uh, as part of our whole building ventilation strategy, let's say that's intermittent, then you have to put in the actual runtime. And um, when you do that, it looks like I had an error here because I've been using this calculator and I actually had left some old data on here. The new calculator that you have will not have that data in there. That will all be blank. Um, but b basically, when you change this from being a local exhaust to a uh, intermittent exhaust, then it's going to make this box go yellow because it says you need to rent, you need to enter a runtime. Now, on this side of the calculator, it's not going to estimate your runtime for you. You're going to have to kind of guess the runtime. And again, the goal is to put in a runtime that will give you enough ventilation if you're only using one fan. If you had a couple of different intermittent fans, then between the two, you'll have to adjust your runtimes to make sure you have enough ventilation. But on this one, if we put in a runtime of 30 minutes, then it would say, well, 30 minutes for a 56 CFM fan would give us continuous ventilation at 28. And so, you know, that would leave us with, uh, we still need 24. So maybe we'd come down here and we'd get the other 24 from our HRV. Uh, or, you know, you could put that in at 60 minutes and it would tell us, yep, that's plenty of ventilation. That will meet ASHRAE. You're good. Or if you had left that blank but you had selected continuous, then you don't have to put in a runtime. It just knows it's 60 and that, you know, we'd have 56 CFM of of ventilation and that will meet ASHRAE. Uh, let's change this back to intermittent and change this back to 30. I don't know why we would do it this way but just for the sake of this example let's do it that way and that way we can fill out our uh, information down here about our HRV. So so far we have we've got some red stuff going on and we we have some yellow boxes that are not filled in so first thing we want to do to try and get rid of the red stuff is make the yellow boxes uh, fill them in. So sure enough, we did install a, a whole uh, an HRV, but when the guys got there, the hall wasn't the best situation. Once they got crawling around in the attic, they found out they needed to just put it on the living room ceiling, but the fan type was an HRV, and uh, we put in a, a, a big 60 CFM HRV. Uh, if we put that down as continuous, now we're getting a, an error saying this home is being overventilated, and basically the parameters I put on that is anytime you're you're overventilating by more than about 20 cfm of air, I think it was 20. Um, you need to you probably need to tighten up your strategy a little bit. Our goal here is to is to add mechanical ventilation to make sure they have enough, but we don't want to add too much other because our primary goal was to save energy, and if we put in way more ventilation than they need then we're just wasting energy. So for right now, I've set the calculator at that. If we need to change that in the future, we can. But really what I'd like you guys to be looking at here is going, oh, well, wait a second. Maybe I should be setting this HRV to be intermittent. And uh, now I need to find a number that basically gives me like 24 CFM. So I know this will give me 60 if I ran it for 30 minutes out of every hour, it would only give me 30. wonder if I just ran it 25 minutes out of every hour. Well, that's giving me 24 CFM of air, and it's getting me just, just beyond what I need for ASHRAE. So if I have the ability to set that there, then I would do that. This, this meets ASHRAE, and uh, I'm done with the calculation. Again, there's a few different warnings that'll pop up. If you forget to fill in the QCI's name, I'll delete that there then you'll see down below you'll get a warning that you have to complete all the fields uh, we'll just hit undo and put that back um, so try to build in some logic try to build in some warnings but basically the goal is when this is done and this one goes in the file every yellow box should be filled in and both the estimate and the actual should say that they meet ASHRAE and everything on the actual that should be exactly what you actually set those fans at in the home when you left. So 
we should expect if we were monitoring this, we would be able to go in and find a bath fan that moves 56 CFM of air and is set to run 30 minutes out of every hour, and an HRV that would move 60 CFM of air and was set to run for 25 minutes out of every hour. All right, that's it. That's the new calculator. Again, send me some feedback on it as you're using it. If something's not working or if something just doesn't make sense, I would really appreciate it, and I'll do my best to, to communicate with you to help you understand it or to tweak it and make changes over time.